Hi, my name is Aaron Franzine, Spray Foam Equipment Manager with IDI Distributors. For over 40 years, IDI has been America's insulation source. In that time, we've partnered with key vendors to provide the best products and services for our customers that we can. To better serve our spray foam customers, we've recently partnered with Graco as well as top rig builders in the industry. We've collaborated with industry experts to develop a list of seven key guidelines. This list is designed to educate our customers on safety, legal, and functional aspects of a rig, set a standard for our industry, and act as a best practices guide. So first we want to talk about generators. You want to make sure that your generator is sized appropriately to handle all of the watts that your system requires with a 15% additional buffer. So if your system requires 17,000 watts, you want to make sure that your generator is capable of powering 19,550 watts. The reason being is that electric motors, when they first start up, you have an inrush current. So you have this influx of power that comes in and it can be up to three times more the regular running current. Failure to have the proper power supply can damage costly parts such as this heater module. There's three of these in your machine and they list for about $800 a piece. So make sure you have the proper power. So number two is air compressors. There's a lot of different elements you wanna look for with a compressor. The first one being, make sure your compressor is big enough to push air through your whole system. So enough air for your transfer pumps, your gun, and a breathable system and an agitator. So a wall mounted breathable system can take up to 10 CFM. And then if you have a cool tube that can take another 10. So there's 20 just for your breathable system. If you throw in your transfer pumps, guns, agitators, things like that, you could be up there. So make sure your compressor is big enough to power your entire system with air. Another thing to take into consideration with your air compressor is what kind of air dryer you have. This particular air dryer is capable of handling 40 CFM, which matches our air compressor. This particular rig is a 40 CFM compressor, 40 CFM air dryer. If this is rated for under what your compressor can put out, you're choking your air system. Another element you want to look for is what is the inlet temp rated for on your air dryer. This particular one is rated for 225 degrees of inlet air. If you go the least expensive route, you can find an air dryer that's only rated for 140, which on a hot day can definitely freeze up and cause restriction from your airflow to the rest of your system. So you can see here this particular air dryer, it is rated for max inlet temp of 225 degrees and it is capable of handling up to 40 SCFM. So those are the numbers that you wanna look for when considering an air dryer. So my last note on compressors uh, is in regards to electric air compressors. This particular rig doesn't have an electric, but if you do have one of those in your rig, you wanna make sure it's equipped with a continuous run valve. So what that does is allow your electric motor to run constantly and smoothly, rather than cycling on and off, which can draw up to three times more amps, which can again blow expensive electrical components. So item number three on the rig standards guide is breathable air. This particular rig is equipped with a wall mounted filtration panel. So you wanna make sure your air compressor is big enough to supply the air to the panel and get out to your hood. We also equip our rigs with an oil coalescing filter, which is right here up on the wall. What that does is collect bulk debris and oil prior to the air entering the filters, which extends the life of those breathable air filters. So item four on the rig standards guide is your supply and your return hoses. So you wanna make sure that those are nylon lined hoses for two reasons. Reason one is nylon is more resistant to chemicals. So if you're running solvents or other chemicals through it, you, it'll be resistant and that nylon won't swell up. The second reason is that it's more resistant to moisture. So especially on our A side here, we wanna make sure we're not getting any moisture through the hoses causing that isocyanate to crystallize. So here are two examples of supply hoses. The one on the left is lined with nylon, which is more resistant to chemicals as well as moisture. The one on the right is a rubber lining, which is much softer and can swell if the wrong chemicals are introduced to the rubber. 
So item five on the spray foam standards guide is insulation. Obviously we're insulators. We wanna make sure that our trailer is foam insulated to maintain a drum temperature between 65 and 75 degrees to increase your yield. So item number six on the spray foam standards guide is safety equipment. Obviously we need to have safety equipment readily available in the rig. So you can see here we have our first aid kit. We also have a place for our MSDS as well as an eyewash station. To avoid loose or dangling wires and a potential fire hazard, we wire all of our trailers to commercial grade electrical code. So you can see the conduit right here. There's no exposed wires anywhere. In case there is a fire, we have our ABC rated fire extinguisher right here as well as one in the back generator room. So number seven on the rig standards guide is weight distribution. So you can see that this trailer here has a GVWR of 14,000 pounds and it's a tandem axle so each axle is rated for 7,000 pounds. You can see here that we're weighing the trailer and we're making sure that once it's built with the foam in the rig that it doesn't exceed the weight rating of the trailer. So the reason we care so much about weight distribution is the last thing we want is for a customer to hit the first weigh station with a brand new rig and fail an inspection. So what we have here is our four scales underneath our four wheels and we average out the weight of axle one and average it out of axle two to make sure we're within the weight rating of the trailer. So the last thing to take into consideration in regards to weight distribution is tongue weight. You saw that our generator on this particular model is placed in the rear of the trailer because it weighs almost 2000 pounds. If we were to put that generator in the front, we would exceed the weight rating for the receiver hitch underneath the truck and it would be too heavy right here and it would be a legal issue. And finally, make sure the driver has a commercial driver's license if the GCVWR of the complete rig is over 26,000 pounds. We hope you found this video useful and please keep in mind these tips when shopping for your next rig. If you have any questions, please contact your local IDI representative and thanks for choosing IDI.